Hello and welcome to today's episode of Shark Week 2019, where we look at our pick for the five weirdest sharks alive today. Our first pick is the star of yesterday's Shark Week video, the Hammerhead Shark. A famous and well-known type of shark, but still certainly fits the description of weird. Hammerheads are of course very distinctive for the most unusual shape of their head, with the hammer part of it being called the cephalofoil. There are many theories about the use of the cephalofoil, and indeed many different ways that hammerheads seem to use it. For example, they have been observed pinning stingrays to the floor, and then eating the ray while it's weak and confused from the impact. It's also believed that its head helps sense their prey. Like all sharks, hammerhead have electrosensory pores which can sense the small amount of electricity given out by living organisms. With these pores, known as the ampullae of Lorenzini, all located in their massive head, hammerhead sharks are able to sweep for prey using their head like a metal detector. In addition to this, the extension of their eyes is believed to give hammerheads an excellent 360 degree vision, to spot prey from every angle. It was also once thought that the cephalofoil was essential in providing the hammerhead with greater mobility, but this has since been attributed mostly to its spine, although it could give them extra lift in the water. Interestingly, the bonnet head shark was found to be capable of asexual reproduction in 2007, and was the first known shark to do such a thing. Next up, the frilled shark. Truly a monster of the deep, the frilled shark has 25 rows of around 300 teeth, making it impossible for prey to escape from its jaws if caught, unless they choose to swim further into the mouth. The mouth itself can open so wide they're able to swallow prey more than half their size. This, and its teeth, compensates for the low bite strength of the frilled shark. The frilled shark has remained relatively unchanged since prehistoric times, living in the ocean hundreds of metres down, even being caught 1,570 metres down. At these depths, very little if any light reaches the frilled sharks, so their large, odd-looking eyes are able to detect even the smallest glimpse of prey. Perhaps it's because they live so deep and in the cold that it's believed their gestation period is three and a half years long, that's 42 months. Next on the list is the prickly dogfish. It's a weird looking shark by nearly all accounts, having the characteristic rough skin of a dogfish coupled with a large hump on its back and large sail-like dorsal fins. Normally found at depths of 350 to 650 meters, it normally feeds on small benthic organisms, creatures that live on the sea floor like worms, crabs and clams. It is thought that its humped back allows for the most energy efficient ways of living near the sea floor, and it's believed that it could have a luminous organ or produce a luminous liquid. But like with many deep water organisms, not a huge amount is known about its biology. Because we know so little about it, the IUCN lists it as data deficient, meaning there isn't enough data gathered to give an accurate reading. And for those of you who have seen this week's Shark Week special of Animal of the Week, its mouth anatomy resembles that of the cookie cutter shark. And for our fourth weird shark, we stick to the depths of the ocean with the goblin shark. Like its cousin, the frilled shark, it's sometimes referred to as a living fossil, due to it being so unchanged for so many millions of years. Its name comes from its abnormally long snout, which it uses, like the hammerhead shark, to scan for the tiny amounts of electricity to find prey in the complete darkness in the depths it lives in. But surprisingly, the goblin shark has an even more interesting trick that it can pull to catch its prey. When its prey sits right in front of its mouth, its jaws jump outwards, protruding from its mouth. Being found so far down at commonly up to 960 metres, and being the slow swimming shark that it is, the goblin shark needs every advantage it can get to survive. Interestingly, it seems that there is a large amount of variation between goblin sharks and their jaw protrusions, leading some to describe different specimens of goblin sharks as distinct and separate species, however this has since been seen as incorrect. But while the deep habitats of this shark may lead to a limited knowledge of it, there is still enough information for it to be confidently classified as least concern on the endangered scale, despite their rarity.
And last on our list is the seriously weird Viper Dogfish or Viper Shark. This species of shark is so rare I couldn't actually find any good images or even a video of a live one, so apologies for that. Typically they migrate vertically during the day night cycle, going between 270 and 360 metres during the day and rising up to less than 150 metres during the night. Interestingly, like the goblin shark, except not to the same extent, the viper shark's jaw protrudes out and latches onto prey with its needle-like teeth. Because of this, viper sharks would be able to swallow a surprisingly large fish whole, another essential weapon in the plethora needed for a predator to survive in the conditions it does. Its exact habitats around the world are known, but the most common place where they have been found is in the Pacific Ocean, by the key peninsula of Japan, although they have also been found in the depths around other Pacific islands. It would be cool to see some live footage of these sharks in action someday. That concludes our pick of the 5 weirdest living sharks. I do hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Do you agree with our list? Do you think we missed out a particularly weird shark? If you do, please let us know in the comments, we'd like to see your own take on this. Remember to check out tomorrow's Shark Week video where Ollie is going to be looking at the world's smallest species of shark. And if you'd like to find out more about our world, its history and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us.